for me. Man, I've been up doing this all morning, man. So, uh, man, there's a, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible, and it says that I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And when I first got a, a, a taste of what that scripture was actually implying is that, man, like when you know Christ, man, there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes along with it. And man, when I started reading the Bible and living the way I live now, man, or trying to figure out how to live the way I live now, I started it in prison, you know, and um, man, and you know, everybody always talks about how you go to jail and get jailhouse religion and then you get out and you just kind of fall off. It's kind of like the same thing. I guess they got a rehab religion. You come to rehab, you get a Bible, you fall in love with God because he speaks to your life, gets better, some things change, and then we go back out. And then life overtakes what little bit of ground, man, we were able to turn up in our lives when we begin to make some actual changes. Man, I, I don't look at that as a bad thing. I look at it as you're selling yourself short of knowing more of the fullness, more of the power of the resurrection of Christ. And so I know this though, man, there's something that's planted on the inside of an individual when that happens. Whatever it is that got them to that place where they begin to believe God's word or, you know, have a relationship with God in the way that they do. Man, you know, so many people get to this point in their journey and they're like, well, I've never done this before. I've never prayed or I've never read my Bible or I never went to church, you know. And so I know for me, I spent a lot of my adult life thinking that I was uh, a, a Christian because I was a Baptist. That sounds crazy when I say that. I really thought there was a difference between a Baptist and a Christian. And I thought Catholics weren't saved on top of all that. Well, you know what? You go to prison, you have an opportunity to like spend time with other people where you get to know about them, their faith, and their denomination. And man, it kind of changes your perspective on things. And so, you know, I know this. I, I knew what people said normally happens to people when they get out of jail. And I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to go to prison, serve 10 years. Oh yeah, for you don't know me, I did. I did 10 flat. Serve 10 years in prison, reading the Bible, quoting scriptures, amen and praying and hallelujah, only to go back out and let life overtake me. But you know what? It almost happened. It really almost happened because I need to be prepared at all times that, man, I'm only one bad decision. And I'm going to throw this out there. I'm only one unchecked emotion away from a relapse. Man, so like right now, we have a lot of stuff going on in our world, man. I mean, there's this virus thing that's, you know, on the news. And, man, it's killing people. And it's getting people, man, I mean, so afraid. I mean... So afraid that you think it's the sign of the apocalypse that people have bought up all the toilet paper in the whole world. I stayed in this morning and I was like, man, what are they going to, man, they're going to be, they have toilet paper to wipe their butt for like 20 years when it's all said and done. It's still going on. I went to the grocery store yesterday. I'm not afraid. I'm not stupid either. I went to the grocery store yesterday and I just looked. Man, there's no macaroni and cheese. There's no eggs. Heaven forbid, there's no toilet paper. There's no canned tuna fish. I mean, come on. I mean, listen, hey, people are in a panic because they're afraid. And you know what, man? There's numerous times in the Bible where the Word of God says, Fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be afraid. You know why God says that? Because people have that emotion to be afraid or to where they're fearful. And the problem is when we stay stuck in that emotion, that's why I say we're, we're, we're only one bad decision or one bad emotion away from having a relapse that just wipes out everything. Because if we find ourselves staying stuck in a decision that's a bad decision, an emotion that's not a good emotion, Without having something to counter that, then you know what happens? We just spiral out of control. And man, fear is something that is not from God. But I do believe this. It's okay to be afraid on occasion. 
Because fear is an indicator that, you know what? Man, I forgot who I am. I, and even more than that, I forgot who God said I am. See, when God says, fear not, when God says, do not be afraid, it's because he knows we're going to have those emotions that cause us to be afraid and to be fearful. But he doesn't want us to, to stay stuck in those emotions because it's those very emotions that have the ability to decapitate us and have us running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Can you imagine that? That's what's going on right now. People are so afraid of what can happen. Well, I can tell you this. I mean, the coronavirus, yeah, man, there's not a cure for it. But there's not a cure for cancer. There's not a cure for HIV. Man, the list goes on and on and on of things that there's not a cure for. And you know what? At one point in time, man, there was pandemonium behind some of those issues. But people every day continue to fight for their life. Man, that are in stage four cancer. And you know what? They're fighting for their life, not because they're afraid, because they choose to believe. You know that song, I mean, he's a God of miracles. Man, he truly is. Because, you know how I know? Because everybody in this room, it's a miracle you hear. It's a miracle. There's not one person in this room, staff included, that it's not a miracle that you're here today. Because from the very beginning, man, there was a plan to take you out. And so whether it's drugs or alcohol or pornography or gambling or emotional issues, depression, things of the sort, man, it's always been the enemy to make those things be bigger than they really are. And then when things are bigger than God, Man, that's counterbalance, and we begin to shift our focus from God, from his word, from his provision to those things that the enemy has right there in our face to be afraid of. Now, you know what that doesn't mean? Like I said, I, man, if I need something from the store, well, heck, I need to go to the daggone store. But I'm not going to be reckless or careless and make decisions that are going to put me, my family, when it comes to work, I'm not going to make decisions that are going to put you, the staff, their family in a situation because we're being afraid. And so, you know, sometimes you just got to have a cool head. You know, somebody came in my office and they said, man, how you doing? I said, man, I feel like I'm Atlas. Man, I'm just carrying the weight of the world. And I really am, but it's the weight of my world. But see, God created us to be the low bearer of the world that we live in. And see, we often fail to recognize that we are created for times like this. Man, there's a passage in the Bible that has just been coming to me time and time again. And it's, uh, it's when, uh, when they were trying to uh, kill all the Jews. And Esther, who was just a nobody, ended up being put in a place of, uh, of position and authority where she could go before the king. And you know what she said? Hey, listen, I don't care if this happens or that happens because it's, it's as a time for this. It's, this is exactly what I'm created for. Now, you know what? There's a whole lot more that I'm created for that's going to come after this. Some I know, some I don't know. But I know this, whenever I get to that point, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to stay afraid. Hey, man, listen, fear is a natural reaction that we have to a lot of things, especially things that we can't control. We get afraid, we get fearful. But see, we think we can't control them, and so we allow ourselves to stay emotionally stuck and connected to that feeling. But in reality, see that verse I said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. See, I think about, man, if somebody was dead and in the grave, and a word, really that's all it is. The right word at the right time. Man, it can define and redefine who you are and change the course of your life. A word spoken to somebody that's dead, man, has the ability to resurrect them from the grave. Listen, man, I've never seen it in the physical sense like that, but I can tell you this. Man, I know that power. I know that power because my life is so messed up, so out of control, so chaotic, that man, somewhere in the course of all that, whether it be listening to the songs, reading the word, having people 
teach things to me that I knew or straight from God's word, man, it brought me from death to life. Man, have I arrived? I surely have not. I'm still on my journey, but that's okay, because today I'm not where I was yesterday, and yesterday I wasn't where I was 10 years ago, and 10 years ago I wasn't where I was 20 years ago. So, man, we have a choice every single day. You know, it's like you spend your day doing all the things that you have to do, man. I mean, I, I sometimes walk out of my office and be like, oh! They're like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I just need to look that out. You sure you need to talk? I'm like, no, I just did. I just needed to let it out. Because, see, if you allow stuff to stay pent up on the inside of you, man, it will wreck you. It will make you sick. It will make you frustrated. It will cause you to just say, man, I'm through. The last thing you want to do is ever get to that point where you feel like life's not worth living. Or life is hopeless. Or I just can't manage to get through this. And that's the great things about uh, friends or people that you love or, or resources that are there to help you, man. I mean... You know, it's just like when they uh, when they they had the man that was on the mat and they lowered him through the roof. Man, you know that guy? He didn't have enough faith to get healed. He didn't have enough faith, but you know what? His friends did. And man, they went to extreme measures to do what this man didn't have the ability to do. And see, sometimes that's life too. We find ourselves in a situation where I I, I just don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. And that's why, man, community is so important. And I know we're in a time where they're talking about how we have to have social distancing and not gathering and doing all of this stuff. Man, hey, listen, I'm in support of that 100%. But, man, there was only four people that lowered that one man through the roof and put him in the place, the right place at the right time, where a word could be spoken, a miracle could happen, and, man, his life was forever changed. So you know what happened? He used to live behind the definition of a paraplegic. But when the right word was given at the right time, man, that guy got up, basically raised from the dead, because his life wasn't producing one daggone thing at that time. See, we think about that. It might not have been producing anything, but you know what it did? It produced something in the lives of other people. Man, it produced faith in some guys that were his friends that were just bold enough, crazy enough just to go the extra mile to get into the place at the right time to where something great could happen. So we got all kinds of stuff going on today. It's a new day. See, we went to sleep last night. Man, we put the chaos under the cover. We laid it under the pillow. And we woke up this morning. And you know what? The burdens of yesterday... That's yesterday's burdens. Man, today, the Bible says, I mean, it says that, you know, we have enough that we have to do today that we don't need to worry about tomorrow. So tomorrow's it's dead and gone. But today, man, it is. It's a new day. And we have an opportunity to live our life in such a way where we are just bold enough to maybe believe a little bit more than we did yesterday. Man, maybe that we can not stay afraid. Maybe we can not allow the things that we hear on the news shake us to our core and forget that the God who raises the dead is bigger than a virus that has the ability to take people out. See, I don't know about you, but I'd rather be, I'd rather be in the boat with Jesus in the worst storm of my life than trying to freestyle and do it on my own. See? There's storms. There's always going to be a storm. We're always going to have something going on. We live in a world that is out of control. But man, any day I'll get in that boat as long as Jesus is in that boat. And I know that, man, I can go through the storm even though the storm's raging around me. I don't have to stay afraid if I get afraid. I don't have to let a wrong thought or a wrong emotion get me to a place where I stay stuck and I can't never recover from. So, man, challenge yourself today. Challenge yourself. If you don't have enough faith, to go find somebody that has enough faith to protect you and encourage you and build you up. Man, these are difficult times. But I can promise you this, it's not the end time. 
Man, we got a lot of life left to live. And you know what's going to happen? There's going to be another some sort of coronavirus in some other fashion, another 10 or 15 years from now. And there's going to be other problems that we have to face on a daily basis that we can't even account for today. But see, when you go through those things, knowing that those are things that you already knew were going to come, they don't catch you off guard. And that's the most important thing that we can do is just to be aware. 